वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टूडेज लेक्चर इज एम्ब्रियोजेनिसिस एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एम्ब्रियो इन मोनोकॉट्स एंड डाइकॉट्स द मेन ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ टूडेज लेक्चर आर टू अंडरस्टैंड द मोड ऑफ जयगोट एंड एंडोसुपम फॉर्मेशन टू अंडरस्टैंड द वेरियस स्टेज ऑफ एम्ब्रियोजेनिसिस इन डाइकॉट एंड मोनोकॉट प्लांट्स टू हाईलाइट द रोल ऑफ सस्पेंसर एंड इट्स मॉडिफिकेशन in angiosperms the female gametophyte also known as the embryo sac is embedded within the ovule it has a polar organization along its micropylar chalazal axes that is the egg cell and synergids are located at the micropylar pole of the ovule two polar nuclei are present in the center whereas the antipodal cells are situated at the opposite end of the embryo sac at the chalazal pole during pollination the pollen tube penetrates the ovule through the micropyle and delivers a sperm nucleus that fuses with the haploid nucleus of the egg cell to produce the zygote which later develops into an embryo a second sperm nucleus combines with the two polar nuclei of the central cell to produce an extra embryonic triploid endosperm nucleus the zygote formed after fertilization rapidly develops into an embryo through the process of embryogenesis within the seed the three primary parts of a seed are the embryo the endosperm and the seed coat the embryo consists of all the cells and tissues required for development of the plant body the endosperm is a source of stored food and provides nutrients for the developing embryo the seed coat consists of one or more protective layers that encase the seed in many seeds the embryo once formed stops growing and moves into a state of dormancy during favorable conditions the embryo resumes rapid growth and development and becomes the mature plant the embryo can be divided into two main regions the hypocotyle that develops into the root and the epicotyle that develops into the shoot system the young juvenile leaves near epicotyle are called cotyledons which provide stored food in the form of starch and proteins to the germinating embryo An embryo of a monocotyledonous plant has one cotyledon while that of a dicotyledonous plant has two cotyledons. A monocot stores the bulk of its energy in the endosperm whereas a dicot stores its food in the two cotyledons. The third part that is the seed coat protects the embryo and endosperm from drying and from physical injury the point of attachment of seed to the ovary wall is called hilum a small opening in the seed coat near the hilum is called as the micropyle in monocotyledonous plants such as the grasses the single massive cotyledon is termed as the scutellum while the plumule and radicle are enclosed by protective structures termed as the coleoptile and the coleoriza respectively now let's discuss embryogenesis the fertilized egg called zygote is unicellular in nature which through a series of events gives rise to a multi cellular embryo with well differentiated organs which embodies within itself the multifarious properties of an adult plant the sequence of events that lead to the formation of mature embryo from a unicellular zygote is called as embryogenesis Five distinct stages can be observed during embryogenesis. For example, the two-celled stage, the globular stage, the heart stage, the torpedo stage, and finally the mature stage. Prior to embryo formation, the zygote usually undergoes a period of dormancy during which many striking changes take place in the zygote. During this period. the vacuole increases in size leading to the accumulation of more cytoplasm towards the chalazal end where first division of the zygote would take place the nucleus surrounded by large number of plastids and mitochondria is now located at the chalazal region of the zygote that is the apical pole whereas the micropylar end of the zygote that is the basal pole is occupied by one or more vacuoles and a few 
active cell organelles. Besides, there is an increase in the number of active dictyosomes responsible for wall synthesis around the zygote. The zygote ready to divide is now a highly polarized isolated cell with no plasmodesmetal connections with the rest of the cells of the ovule. The embryogenesis in plants begins with an asymmetrical division. In majority of the angiosperms, zygote divides transversely resulting in a smaller apical or terminal cell designated as CA towards the interior of the embryo sac and a larger basal cell designated as CB towards the micropylar end. This first asymmetric division provides polarity to the embryo. In some cases, the first division of zygote may be vertical, for example, in members of Laurenthesi or oblique, for example, in grasses like triticum. From this two-celled stage until the initiation of organs, the growing embryo is called proembryo. In a two-celled proembryo, the basal cell that is CB either remains undivided or undergoes a transverse division to form two cells namely M and CI. On the other hand, the apical cell that is CA may divide vertically or transversely into two cells namely L and L1 to form a four-celled linear or T-shaped proembryo respectively. In a linear proembryo that is four-celled stage, the two daughter cells of CA cell that is L and L1 undergo two vertical divisions at right angles to each other to give rise to an octant stage embryo proper with two superimposed tires L and L1 of four cells each. Similar type of octant is formed in case of a T-shaped proembryo by one transverse and one vertical division. However, the T-shaped proembryo can also form an octant of different configuration in which all the eight cells are included in the same tire designated as Q. Thus, in angiosperms, two types of octant configurations occur. For example, number one, the cells are arranged in two superimposed tires of four cells each. For example, species of beta, capsula, poa, sagittaria, etc. Number second type, all the eight cells occur in a single tire. For example, species of lectuca, muscari, etc. Both these types of octants occur in monocots as well as dicots. It is the octant stage of the proembryo that destinies of various cells are determined. The octant stage embryo by periclinal divisions sets up the first histologically detectable tissue that is the protoderm, which is the precursor of the epidermis. The delineation of the protoderm establishes the globular stage embryo, which increases in size and cell number by cell divisions of the protoderm and the interior cells. In some plants, the basal cell of the two-celled embryo undergoes a series of transverse divisions resulting in the formation of the hypophysis or the suspensor. The hypophysis, which is the uppermost derivative of the basal cell, serves as the precursor to the root cortex initials and the central region of the root cap. The suspensor is an ephemeral embryonic structure and comprises of a single row of 6 to 12 cells, although there are substantial variations in the number and layers of suspensor cells in different plants. The suspensor is thought to function in embryogenesis by pushing the embryo into the nutrient-rich endosperm and also transports nutrients and growth factors from the maternal tissue to the embryo. The suspensor generally reaches maximum cell number by the early globular stage of development and begins to sense during the torpedo stage. A dramatic transformation of embryo morphology occurs during the transition from globular to the heart stage. The cell divisions parallel to the embryo surface occur at specific regions of the lateral margins of the globular stage embryo resulting in the emergence of the two lobes of the cotyledons. The shift in embryo symmetry from radial at the globular stage 
to bilateral at the heart stage represents the initial delineation of the two major embryonic organ systems, the cotyledons and axes. Following their formation, the cotyledons and axes elongate rapidly as a result of cell division and cell expansion. Other tissues and structures characteristic of post-embryonic plants can be discerned in a heart stage embryo. For example, the procambium which is the precursor of the vascular tissue and the ground meristem can be first identified histologically during the globular to heart stage transition. Furthermore, the cells that will form the root apex and in some plants the shoot apex can be distinguished by about this stage of embryogenesis. The extent to which the shoot apical meristem is activated and tissues are differentiated at this stage vary in different species. Now let us discuss embryogenesis in dicots. In dicots, with only a few exception, the first division of zygote is always transverse, resulting into an apical cell and a basal cell. The apical cell may further divide transversely or longitudinally, whereas the basal cell may either divide transversely or remains undivided to form a large vesicular structure. Based on the plane of division of the apical cell in the two-celled pro-embryo and the contribution of the apical cell that is the CA and the basal cell that is the CB in the formation of embryo proper, five chief types of embryogeny have been recognized in dicots by Shinarf in 1929, Johansson in 1945 and Maheshwari 1950. These are number one crucifer type also called as onagrad type. Number two asteroid type. Number third swollenid type. Number four karyophyllid type. Number five chinopodial type. Now let us discuss each of these embryogeny types one by one briefly. Number first, onagrad type. In this case, the first division of zygote is transverse, forming a small apical cell known as CA and a large basal cell that is CB. The basal cell CB then divides transversely, forming two superimposed cells CI and M. Whereas apical cell that is CA undergoes a vertical division thus giving rise to a T-shaped four-celled pro-embryo. Of the two daughter cells of basal cell, the cell CI divides transversely giving rise to two daughter cells namely N and N dash. These two cells divide further to form a linear row of three to four celled suspensor. The cell M divides vertically to form a row of four to six cells. Each of these cells undergo oblique periclinal divisions to form an inner set of cells which act as initials of root apex and an outer set of cells which act as the initials of root cap. In the meantime, the daughter cells of cell CA that is the apical cell divide by another vertical division at right angles to the first division forming a quadrant Q. A transverse division of the quadrant results in an octant arranged in two tires L and L dash of four cells each. The cells of tire L and L dash by vertical divisions give rise to globular proembryo. The peripheral cells of this globular proembryo by periclinal divisions give rise to single layered dermatogen, which is the future epidermis. The polymule and two cotyledons are differentiated from the tire L. Due to faster growth in the cotyledonary zone, the polymule in a mature embryo is present at the base of the two cotyledons. The cells of tire L finally form the hypocotyl radical axis. Thus, apical cell that is CA contributes to cotyledonary region, stem tip and hypocotyledonary region, whereas the basal cell that is CB contributes to root cortex, root cap and suspensor. Now, number second type 
esterid type. This type of embryogeny is found in the members of estracy. The first division of zygote is transverse, giving rise to an apical cell that is CA and a basal cell that is CB. The four celled proembryo is formed by a vertical division in the apical cell and a transverse division in the basal cell. The four celled proembryo thus formed consists of two juxtaposed cells of the apical cell and the two superimposed cells of the basal cell, namely CI and M. The daughter cells of apical cell divide again to give rise to a quadrant Q. The basal cell M divides vertically to form two juxtaposed cells, whereas the cell CI divides transversely to form the daughter cells N and N dash. In the following stages, the cells of quadrant Q divide to form the octant stage. The two cells of the tire M undergo a vertical division to give rise to the four cells lying directly above the octant tire Q. The basal cell N divides by a vertical wall and N dash by a transverse wall to form the cells O and P. At the same time, Tangential walls are laid down in the tires Q and M to cut off an outer layer of dermatogen cells from the inner cells which undergo further divisions to give rise to the peribulum and pilirome. During further development, the cell P gives rise to a suspensor of variable number of cells O to the root cap and dermatogen of the root N to the remaining part of the root tube M to the hypocotyledonary region and Q to the cotyledonous and stem tube. A few variations however exist in other members of S. tracy in the overall development of embryo. Thus, here in this case apical cell that is CA contributes to the cotyledonary region and stem tube, whereas the basal cell that is CB contributes to the hypocotylinary region, root cortex, root cap and suspensor. Now the third type that is solenoid type. Here the first division of zygote is transverse forming two celled proembryo that is CA and CB. The basal cell CB then divides transversely to produce two cells CI and M, whereas the apical cell CA divides transversely to produce L and L dash. From this four celled linear proembryo, the basal cell CI and M undergo further divisions to produce suspensor of 8 to 12 cells long. Thus, the derivatives of basal cell do not take part in the development of embryo proper. Subsequently, divisions in the daughter cells of apical cell are responsible for the formation of dermatogen, the peribulum and pilirium initials of the sitem and the root cap. Thus, in solenoid type, apical cell that is CA contributes to cotyledonary region, sitem tip, hypocotylinary region, root cortex, whereas the basal cell that is CB contributes to the root cap and suspensor formation. Now the fourth type that is chenopodial type. This type of embryogenesis is found in the members of chenopodiaceae. The four celled proembryo is formed in the same manner as in case of solenoid type consisting of cells L L dash M and C I. However, in this case, both apical and basal cells contribute to the formation of embryo proper. The contributions of apical and basal cells in the development of embryo proper are summarized here. The apical cell contributes to the cotyledonary region, sitem tube, and part of the hypocotyledonary region, whereas basal cell here that is the CB contributes to the part of the hypocotyledonary region, root cortex, root cap and suspensor. Now the fifth one that is the karyophyllid type. This type of embryogeny is characteristic of the family karyophyllaceae, Drosaraceae, Helorigaceae, etc. It is different from other types in the sense that after the first division of zygote, the basal cell CB that is CB remains undivided and forms a large vesicular structure which does not take 
any further part in the development of embryo. The terminal cell CA undergoes transverse and vertical divisions to produce daughter cells which are destined to form the step tip, cotyledonous, hypocotylous, root cap and to a short suspensor. The apical cell CA thus acts like a zygote for the embryonal development of this type. Some variations in the embryo development however do exist in different members. Now let us discuss embryogenesis in monocotyledonous. In monocotus, the development of embryo up to the octant stage is similar as in case of dicotus. However, the mature embryo is completely different in the two groups. As already said, the main difference between the two embryos is in the number of cotyledonous. Let us discuss grass embryo in detail as an example in case of monocots. The embryo of gramini, that is the grasses, is strikingly different from that of other monocots in its development as well as in mature form. For example, in triticum, the mature embryo has a single cotyledon called scutellum. In median longitudinal section of the mature embryo, it appears laterally attached to the embryonal axis. The portion of the embryonal axis below the level of scutellum is the radical which bears an apical meristem and a root cap at the lower end. The radical and its cap are enclosed in coleorrhiza, which is the undifferentiated lower part of the embryo. The portion of the embryonal axis above the level of scutellum is the epicotyle. It comprises a shoot apex with some leaf primordia enclosed in a hollow foliar structure that is the coleoptylus. On one side, the coleorrhiza gives out a small outgrowth called epiblast. Now let us discuss embryogenesis in triticum. The early part of embryogeny in triticum is characterized by the regular occurrence of oblique divisions. The first division of zygote occurs by a, an oblique wall producing a small apical cell that is CA and a large basal cell that is CB. The cell CB again divides obliquely forming cells CI and M. The cell CA then divides in a plane at right angles to the first division of the zygote. The orientation of walls in this four-celled proembryo in triticum is quite different from other monocots and dicots. Subsequently, the cell CI divides to form the daughter cells N and N dash. The cell CA divide to form the quadrant Q, whereas the cell M divides vertically into two cells. Further divisions occur in various planes. Organogenesis begins at 16 to 32 cell stage of proembryo. The first organ to be initiated is the single cotyledon or scutellum. Its differentiation starts with growth in the apical lateral region of the proembryo involving tires Q, M and N. With further development, a construction appears opposite the scutellum in the tire CA demarcating it from rest of the embryo. This is followed by appearance of primordia of coleoptile and then the shoot apex. The radical differentiates endogenously in the central zone of the embryo. The epicotyle is formed by the terminal tire Q and its apparent lateral position in the mature embryo is due to the active growth of the cotyledon which leaves behind the epicotylus. Now let us discuss the suspensor and its modifications. The suspensor is an ephemeral structure found at the radical end of the proembryo. It grows much faster than the embryo proper during early stages of the embryo development and attains its maximum size by the globular or early heart stage of the proembryo. In the mature seed, only remnants of the suspensor may be seen. In majority of the angiospermas, the suspensor has no special function except that of pushing the embryo deep into the endosperm. Where it is surrounded by cells containing abundant food material. In some plants, the suspensor shows a pronounced increase in size or gives rise to a prominent hostorial structures which 
penetrate between the cells of the endosperm and encroach upon the surrounding tissues of the ovule. The suspensor hostoria are now known to be of wide occurrence in angiospermas. The function of suspensor therefore is not only to bring the embryo into favorable position with relation to food supply, but it is also actively involved in the absorption of nutrients from various ovular and extraovular tissues and translocating them into the embryo proper. In family orchidaceae, the endosperm is absent. Whereas the suspensor has varied organizations. For example, in dendrobium, suspensor is single celled, enlarged, sac like conical or tubular structure. In Habinaria, the suspensor is uniseriate filament of 5 to 10 cells which grow beyond the micropyle and penetrates placenta by hostorial branches. In some members, like Cotonia and Vanda, the suspensor divides by three vertical divisions and the eight cells thus formed elongate downward enveloping more than half of the embryo. In some cases, the suspensor cells elongate and form tubular structures, for example in Cymbidium. In Decrea stylosa from family Podostaminaceae, the basal cell with two large nuclei enlarges and gives out several thin walled hostorial branches which grow in between the two integuments and are larger than the embryo proper. In Mediofilum from family Helorugaceae, the two celled proembryo comprises a large basal cell and a smaller apical cell. The basal cell forms the hostoria. It divides longitudinally to form two daughter cells which become extremely large with hypertrophied nuclei occupying the entire space in the micropylar part of the embryo sac. Similarly, suspensor hostoria are also commonly found in other families like Crajulaceae, Femeriaceae and Leguminaceae etc. Now, let us conclude this lecture. In this lecture, uh, we have discussed some very important points. For example, the series of events that lead to the formation of an embryo from a single celled zygote is called embryogenesis. The embryo represents the miniature of a plant and has the capability of developing into a whole plant. Number two, in majority of angiospermas, the first division of zygote is always transverse, producing a small apical cell and a large basal cell. Number three, the apical cell by further divisions give rise to embryo proper, whereas the basal cell give rise to suspensor. Number four, during embryogenesis, the growing embryo passes through two celled stage followed by four celled stage, globular stage, heart shaped stage and torpedo stage or the mature stage. Number five, in dicots, based on the first division of apical cell and the contribution of the apical and basal cells, different types of embryogenesis are found. For example, onagrid type, esteroid type, solenoid type, karyophyllid type and genopodial type. In monocots like grasses, the embryogenesis is characterized by the occurrence of oblique divisions. Next, the suspensor formed during embryogenesis is meant for nutrient uptake and positioning of the embryo proper. That is all about today's lecture. Thank you very much.